Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. And welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Business Innovators Radio. And this is another episode of our special program, Business Networking Influencers Podcast. And joining me today, I have a very special guest, Ms. Elvia Williams, and she is with Your Time Home Inspections in San Antonio, Texas. Elvia, welcome to the program. Thank you, Marco, and thank you so much for having me. It's such a blessing and an honor. I appreciate it. It is an absolute pleasure having you on the podcast here today. We're going to talk a little bit about you. We're going to talk a little bit about your business. And we are going to ask you a few questions about what you do and how you do it and what makes you different. And I'm sure the listeners are going to really appreciate your point of view and all of that. So let's dive straight in. Yes, let's do it. Okay. So question number one, probably the most important question. Tell us about your time home inspections and how you're helping your clients. I love that. So your time home inspections is here and we pride ourselves in enlightening, educating, and not frightening our clients. And what I mean by that is we're out there to promote and assist and help our clients in making the educated decision on purchasing an investment for them, right? For their family. So in essence, we're there to protect their investment by doing the home inspection. That's wonderful. That is absolutely wonderful. Now I want to ask you a little bit more about your why, okay? And okay. and specifically why your ideal prospect would want to work with you. So if you could explain to me some of the benefits and advantages of having someone go with your time home inspections for their inspection needs. Most definitely. So my why starts with me and my husband purchasing our first home together in 2013 when we hired an inspector to come and inspect our property. Um, We wrote him a check for $375. He was there 45 minutes. Uh, When he left um, being in the home six months after we started beginning to have a couple of issues, one was with plumbing. And so my husband being of of construction background, he's like, you know, I can do this. A lot of the things that were missed on the report is were things that potentially should have been caught, but that they're they're not right. We're only human. We can only do so much. Sure. And so we got into the business. My why is because I saw the struggles we had with the bills that that we had to pay for a plumber to come out there to get these things fixed when Mm. something could have just been caught right in the front, right? When we're doing the inspection. Yes. So the why is it to educate people? Because once you purchase this property, and if you don't get it inspected, anything and everything that comes after is your responsibility. We want to make sure that we educate our clients. The why is to educate them. And yes. that way, and that's the important piece of doing the home inspection is the education portion of it. Yes, absolutely. I, I completely agree. Now, let's talk a little bit about maybe some of the myths that are out there. So let me just kind of preface it with this. Okay, a myth would be misinformation or misrepresentation of facts that would be spread by the media or even the industry itself. Okay, right. what are some of the bigger myths that are out there when it comes to hiring a, a home inspection service? Well, the big myth is like, well, you don't really need to hire home inspection because we have, you know, my uncle or a friend that's a contractor that can go out there and, you know, my tío that live that sells tacos down the street, whatever it may be, right? Jack of all trades. Jack of all trades. You don't need to get a home inspection, you know, and because we can get my uncle or a friend of ours to come check out your roof. Well, the myth about that is that we're, we are licensed Trek um, inspectors by the Texas real estate profession. Sure. We're licensed to do these things. And you don't know if that person down the street is going to be licensed. So there's there's a standards of practice that we have to follow and that we love to follow to make sure that our clients are getting that top-notch home inspection, right? Sure. And sure. So that's the big myth is that I hear a lot of people say, we don't really need it because you know, we're just going to go ahead and buy it. Or the buyer is saying that the seller is saying that, oh, you know, they just had this and that they are actually giving us a disclosure. Um, They are, you know, things like that. You still want to protect yourself. You really do. 
Yeah. I think one of the misconceptions or myths that I hear is that um, it's not worth the investment, right? Yes. And and can you can you maybe just touch a little bit on, um, you know, hey, I'm trying to save $500, $300, whatever the cost is. And that skipping over that could turn into something much more costly for you, right? Afterwards, if you didn't actually get that done properly. Right. So I will give you an example. There is so many that we have, but I will share one where one of our clients um, chose not to get the inspection uh, for whatever reason being just didn't get it. Sure. So about six months after she purchased the home, she did reach out to us to see if we had referrals for partners, you know, such as an electrician or a plumber and more so for an HVAC. So we did give her the referral the HVAC person showed up and uh, realized that the, this could have, if she would have gotten inspected, it would have saved her a good $8,000 because now the unit needed to be replaced. Wow. Okay. Elvia, can you share an example of how you've helped your clients overcome uh, certain fears or obstacles before getting their home inspected, uh, specifically a home that they're about to purchase? So here's another one I have for you, Marco. So yes, new construction. So let me give you an example of the new constructions and how we save our clients money with that. Okay. We offer phase inspections. We do pre-pour, frame, and final. Well, a lot of our clients, it's totally up to them what phase that they want to do the inspection for. We had one client where she did the final with us. Um, she didn't do the, the pre-drywall with us. And that's fine. It's their choice. Sure. We did the final for her. We one of our inspectors noticed that there was a heat differential from the front of the bedroom to the back of the bedroom. AC was coming out the way it was supposed to, you know, with their they have their equipment. The flow of AC was coming out, but still the front room was not cooling. I see. So our inspectors have what's called an infrared scanning, infrared mm-hmm. cameras, and all our inspectors carry that. So they we start troubleshooting, right? Why this is not happening. Come to find out the whole front of the bedroom was missing insulation. Had we done the pre-drywall, it would have been caught. Now, I'm glad that it was still caught and the builder absolutely came back and got it done for her. But the importance wow. of it is that had she not got it and inspected at all, um, she would have been having these high electric bills, right? So we right. essentially saved her. Well, no, we saved her a couple of thousand dollars with that. Easily. Example. Easily. Yes, perfect. You, it sounds almost, Elvia, like you guys, like your, your time, time home you know. inspection, excuse me, is like a, you guys are almost like superheroes, right? Because you can see <laughs> through the walls, right? You have these superhero, um, you know, qualities, right? That right. our eyes can only go so far. That's right. And let's be honest, right? Theo's eyes can only go so far, right? Because he's just <laughs> looking right. at the old school style. You guys come in with your with equipment. your equipment, right? Yeah. And your state-of-the-art equipment. And you're literally able to see behind walls. I love that you just said that, Marco, because I'll give you another example for the Pier and Beam Homes. Here in the state of Texas, uh, Trek says to our that says that if there is a Pier and Beam home and the inspector does not have to go underneath the home. Um, if there is loose wires, water, or animals, right? Mm. So the difference that makes the what stands us out, you ready yes. to hear this? <laughs> yes. yes. We have crawbot robots with Bluetooth cameras under on top. Wow. So there is never a reason why we should not get a good visual of the undercarriage of that home. Right. Unacceptable. Right. We will send the robot, better the robot to get bit or right. execute it. Absolutely. But that's because we want to offer that top notch for our client to say, no, no, sir. No, sure. ma'am. We are going under there and we're sending our robot and it's going to take video for you to know the that condition. is amazing. You guys have some <laughs> cool toys. Let me oh tell my you. God. You know what's so funny, Marco? You say toys. One time my husband, I mentioned that to one of the inspectors. He's like, they're not toys. They are tools. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> all right, I'll back up. But to <laughs> me, they're like easy, toys. Bro. Yeah, no, exactly. No, that is really impressive. Yeah, I think a lot of people have that old school mindset. There's only one way to check. You got to crawl right. underneath there manually and Flashlight. risk your life. But you know what? In this day and age, it doesn't have to be like that. There, no. there are resources available to get it done safer and maybe even more thorough, maybe even possibly that's more right. thorough with some of that equipment, right? So that's right. yeah, that's really impressive. That's really impressive. Um so what are some, maybe some fears that a potential buyer or seller of a home may have 
um, about, you know, hiring someone for, for a home inspection? So a lot of the fears is like saying, well, what if I do get an inspection, it's going to need foundation or it's going to need A, B, and C. And this is what I tell everybody. There's no such thing as the perfect home, but we're here to help you find the condition of the property, right? Because everything and anything can be fixed. Of sure. course, it's going to come at a cost, but that's why it's so important for you to decide once I get this inspected, you know, if it does need foundation and there's there, we're suggesting a structure engineer, then that's something that's an educated decision. You're going to have to figure out, is it worth me buying this home? Right. Sure. Yes. So the big misconception is like, I just don't want to do it. It's going to be an older home. I know I'm going to have to fix it. So I'm just going to not pay the $400 or the 450, whatever it may be, because we charge per the square footage of the home. Sure. But your, our average fee is about 450 with the termite inspection. So 450 to pay the 450 or not to pay it and have foundation issues, HVAC and electrical, it is really worth that $450. Very worth it. Very worth so, it. Just the peace of mind alone. Right. Yeah. Of just knowing where you stand. You know, the peace of mind. And in this in this time, in this market turn, that's the market, the way what it's doing right now. I who cares what it's doing, to be honest with you. It's going to do what it's going to do. We have no control over it. The best right. thing we can do is stay positive and utilize our tools that we already have to make. Hey, this is not working. Let's let's shoot for something else. For sure. Um, that's just the market with the market. They were a couple, six months ago, they were waiving the home inspection because they were like winning bids and contracts by the seller saying, well, if you don't get it inspected, I'll just give you the contract. So it it is changing. It's an ever changing market. And sure. I don't think I've ever seen it do what it's doing now, right. but I'm not going to worry about it. I am right. going to keep going. I'm going to keep hustling. That's yeah. right. That's all we can do. Absolutely. I'm with you on that. Yeah. So Elvia, what has inspired you or what inspired you to become a home inspector in the first place? So most definitely. So I'm a banker by trade. I worked at Frost Bank for 24 years. My husband, after we got, we received our home inspection and we, we had all those, you know, the concerns that we had, we, my husband's like, well, I want to get in this field to educate our clients to make this industry better for people that are purchasing these properties or investments. So he started in 2015 and we both kind of brainstormed and we said, this is what we want to do. This is what he wants to do. I'm supporting him. I was still working at Frost Bank and he's, he took off with this beautifully marketing, doing the best that he could in 2018. He says, I need help. I need help. So that's when I jumped in with him in 2018. I took a leap of faith of leaving my job of 24 years to jump in and help my husband do marketing. And you better believe it, Marco. I hit it. I hit the ground running. Was I afraid? Yes, most definitely. Because I didn't have my 401k anymore. We didn't have medical insurance anymore. So it's something that we just both took a leap of faith. And I said, my husband's doing wonderful. I'm going to piggyback on what he's doing. And I'm just going to take it. Yes. And I ran with it. And that's the story. And and that's how I've been. And I've loved it ever since. You know, one of the beautiful things that my husband um, tells me when I was booking the jobs, he goes, you know, when you get on the phone with our clients, you become their tia, their best friend, the neighbor, the abuelita, the grandma, yes. you become that person because it's about building the relationships with them. Right. And so yes. I realized, Marco, that that was my calling. My Got calling you. is to be a part of this with my husband. Mm-hmm. That is beautiful. And you kind of took the words out of my mouth because mm-hmm. the, my next question was going to be describe what drives you and your passion <laughs> to do what you do to help the people that you serve. And I think that that you pretty much summarize that. With that, do you want to expound on that just a little bit more? Yes, most definitely. You know, there's a story uh, when I worked at Frost Bank, and I'll tell you why I'm expanding, because sometimes people feel like, God, I should have just done this five years ago. I should have just done this two years ago. Well, five or two years ago may not have been your time. Sure. My time was at the right time that I did this. Um, one of the CEOs of Frost Bank, um, Gary McKnight, and, and I put it on here because I have so much respect for him. He tells me, he comes up to me and goes, you know, Elvia? You've worked the back office here at Frost Bank for so many years. You don't belong here. You belong out in the front helping people. And I'm going to tell you what differentiates you from somebody else that knows a lot of people. Other people know other people, but you know other people, their pets, their grandmothers, their tias, their aunts, their cousin. 
That's what makes you different. And that's why I know that you taking this position with your husband is going to take out of the top because it's about building those relationships. Sure. That was my aha moment. Like this yes. is where I belong. Yeah. Yes. Doing that the is amazing. And it, isn't that so, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's so impactful when somebody recognizes that talent, oh in you, right? Especially in the workplace, right? Because you, sometimes we hear it from family and friends and we're like, you're just telling me that because you're my family member, you know, No. but, but yeah. when it comes from somebody at work, you're like, this person would tell me if I sucked, you know? So <laughs> if they're telling me a compliment, it's probably very much, you know, merited it's earned. It, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it goes a long way. It really does. So I can, I can definitely uh, relate to that. I've had similar experiences in those type of that kind of feedback like that from a boss yeah, um, man, it's it's powerful, you know, and it's enough to it's actually enough to kick you into a new career, which is exactly Ooh. what it did for you. Yeah, it was like, I'm out of here. Thanks. Thanks for the compliment. <laughs> Especially from one of the CEOs, like people were like, oh, so intimidated by him. And I'm like, why? He's just a person like we are. Right. Yeah. And if you're doing your job, most likely That's right. your feedback's going to be good. So That's right. there's nothing to really be afraid of. I love it. <laughs> That's awesome. That is really awesome. Let me ask you one more question about your backstory. Um, can you share a lesson maybe that you learned early on that still impacts how you do business today? This could be from your childhood. This could be something that you learned from your parents, grandparents, wow. whoever, mentor, anything that still impacts how you do business to this day. You know, that is such a great question, but it can be, it can be very deep as well, because I was raised on the West side of San Antonio. And what I mean by that is that if people are from here, you know, West side, like I was raised in the projects, like I went to Alasana Pacha courts, I went to Lanier high school. One of the things my mom always taught me, because as a single mom, my mom was my father and my mother always taught me to do the best that I could. It didn't matter that I didn't have much. Sure. But it mattered to me to make sure that I do the best that I can. It didn't matter if we had a little bowl of frijoles. You're going to make that bowl of frijoles the best. And it was so dang good. Yes. So my mom always taught me, make the best of what you have, you know, and then God will bless you in return. And sure. that's what I followed throughout even my high school and being raised. And I tell people when I hear these stories are like, oh, well, the reason that they're doing this is because they were raised in a very, very poor neighborhood. And I will tell you what. I was raised in a very poor neighborhood, but I made, I had choices and I made my choices. So you can't say because you've come from this area or you, because you've been through this, you cannot be successful. Right. Always said, make the best of whatever you have yes. and everything else will be plentiful. And so wow. if one of the things that I learned and brought it into a teenage and adulthood and my marriage and my business is to make the best of what we have so that somebody else can benefit from that. Because the more good you put out, you're going to receive it tenfold. Yes. And I don't just do it because I know I'm going to receive it. I do it from my heart. And because that's what we've been doing for so long since I was a child. So wow. it's just about do making the best of whatever you have. Absolutely. Yes. Whatever you have. That's really beautiful, Elvia. And thank you so much for sharing that. Because you. Um, you want to talk about you know something that will resonate with other people. You know, um, there are a lot of people that are convinced that they are victims of their circumstances yeah. and their neighborhood or whatever it may be. Right. And it's a, they don't realize like it's their own mental block mm -hmm. that is stopping them from maybe exactly. taking that next step. Right. The, there's there's actually no barriers in front of them except for the ones that they've created. That's right. You know what I'm saying? You know, and I am so grateful for you because this can go really deep because I have so much, you know, I will. Oh, we're, no, we're doing another interview about just that because <laughs> okay. I can tell you have an amazing story. Oh, I love, but, it. Know, we'll I love be, it. We'll be going much deeper on that in a, in a okay. different interview. So, yeah, absolutely. But no, go ahead. Finish. Finish what you were well, going to share. What I was going to say when you were saying, Marcos, about Mar Marco, about the about the mindset, yes. uh, you know, Two years ago, I completed my first full marathon where I did 26.2 miles for the Alamo, Alamo 26 downtown. Wow. Now I trained for it six months. And, you know, I tell people, no, I can't do that. Yes, you can. It is a mindset. It is literally a mindset because the mind you set yourself to do it, your body is going to follow. Right. So when somebody tells me, well, you were from the West side and, you know, people that are from the West side are not going are not successful people. That is incorrect. Um, it doesn't matter your background. If you 
make, if you set that mindset to do something and you follow through with it consistently, then there's no reason why you're not going to be successful. And that Absolutely. goes with running the business that goes in your personal marriage and your, with your marriage, with your children. That's right. Right. It goes with you can apply it to anything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Everything. But yeah, but I just wanted to share that. No, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing that Elvia. And that's why for myself as a fellow entrepreneur, you know, um, I've always say, said that that entrepreneurship is the great equalizer. If yeah. you if you can get past those mental inhibitions and you put in the work, really the sky is the limit, right? That's I right. mean, n- none of that stuff matters. It doesn't matter your race. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter your religion. It doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't, none of that. It doesn't. Right? Invest in yourself because you are worth it. You are worth it. Um, you know, in this time, uh, we have a couple of other inspection companies that have gotten a hold of us and said, how is it that you guys are staying afloat in this time? What is it that you're doing different? Um, and we tell them you stay positive, you invest in yourself, stay positive, no matter what the market is doing, invest in yourself because you are worth it. And then build from there because that's what we've done. And, you know, some inspectors are like, well, I don't want to invest in that sounds like too much. It's sure, that sure. mindset. So right. again, it falls. So I really love what you said about the, the mindset. You really, really have to, it's got to be up here. It You've does. It's got to be up in the mind. It's yeah. so, it's so huge. It's so huge. Elvia, thank you so much for all the information that you have shared today. You've taught really? us a lot about your business. You've, you've shared with us things that we should be aware of, uh, mistakes and pitfalls and misconceptions and things like yeah. that, that are out there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and and conclude with this question here. How can someone find out more about Elvia Williams and your time home inspections? Most definitely. They can go to our website at yourtimehomeinspections.com. And they can also reach out to us through a text or phone call. They can call 210-367-2945. Um, and really just going to the website because I would love people to navigate it, go to our website, look at our reviews, do your due diligence when you're hiring a home inspector, but that's how they, they can get a hold of us. That's wonderful. Thank you for joining us again here today for another episode of business networking influencers. And thank you again to you, Miss Elvia Williams, for all of the amazing information that you shared today. Thank you, Marco. I appreciate you. You're absolutely welcome. Have a good one. You too. Bye. (laughs) Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.